All right. Hey, hi, hello, everyone. Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. I am back for another installment of These Albums Are 10 Out of 10. We've done the 2000s, the 90s, the 80s. Not to say that the records I listed encompass all the potential 10 out of 10s that happened in those decades, but uh, certainly listing five in each of those decades that I feel so strongly about that I would list them as a 10. I'm doing that again in this video, but for the 1970s. So again, here are five records, just, just five, five, that I feel very strongly about. I feel very confidently. I feel very firmly are a 10 out of 10. This is canon. This is Fantano score canon. So uh, here we go. You're probably familiar uh, with all of them if you're a music nerd type, but if you happen to have not heard any of these LPs, I highly recommend that you listen to them. Uh, let's go. Starting off with the 1970 Miles Davis album, Bitches. Uh, Miles Davis was many things, a trumpet player, a songwriter, a composer, uh, but of a lot of the jazz players who were uh, cut from his cloth, uh, you know, were at their peak during his era, uh, he was certainly one of the most forward thinking and cutting edge. And Bitches Brew is one of many examples in his discography of that with him, you know, pretty much dropping uh, a landmark a uh, jazz fusion record here. Yes, obviously embracing the aesthetics and the improvisation, the collective performance style of jazz music, but applying to it other various styles of music, be it uh, avant-garde stuff, rock stuff, funk stuff. There are some amazing sessions caught to tape on this record. Uh, the double drumming and uh, the interesting use of panning on a lot of these tracks makes it a, a really immersive and interesting sonic experience. A lot of the tracks and performances on this thing are long. You really kind of get lost in them. The record, even for as old as it is, in my opinion, is still mind bending, otherworldly, feels like I'm just being transported to uh, some kind of weird ass psychedelic surreal setting, uh, pretty much, you know, like the front cover here. In the 1970s, double albums were becoming more commonplace, and this is one of the best of the decade, hands down, not just because of how adventurous and defining it is for the jazz fusion genre, but man, uh, the performances and just the clarity and richness of the production on this record as well is stunning. Yeah, I would give it a 10 out of 10. Duh. Next, we have The Clash's London Calling. Uh, the Clash being one of the most definitive punk rock bands from the UK. But, um, you know, to me, the reason I love this record so much is that it's not really that much of a punk album. I know it often gets categorized as a punk album because it is The Clash, but uh, part of what makes this record so awesome is that the band really kind of ventured out of the whole punk thing and were just making really straightforward, great rock and rock and roll tunes, rockabilly tunes, ska tunes. The chaotic thrash and bash energy of a lot of the late 70s punk rock bands from the UK, including The Clash uh, itself, is just not really present on this record. What is there? in place of that is uh, actually quite a bit of songwriting maturity, finesse, versatility, and in the track list, banger after banger after banger after banger. So many amazing and memorable choruses on this thing. Please, what did for Jimmy Jazz? I'm all lost in the supermarket, working for the clampdown. Like, my God, it's just tune after tune after tune after tune. Like, Joe Strummer and company were just on fire writing these tracks. It's like really all I can say. It's like one of the best and most versatile and enjoyable front to back, especially with it being as long as it is, uh, rock albums of all time. Quite a bit of wit and social commentary going on in many of the lyrics on these tracks too. It's just an amazing and in my opinion, flawless smorgasbord of everything that you need to hear as far as rock music in the 70s is concerned. At least more direct and accessible forms of it anyway. <laughs> Next, we have Marvin Gaye with What's Going On? One of the most passionate, well-written, soaring, refined, beautiful, and urgent in terms of its social commentary, uh, soul records of all time. Marvin Gaye was on another fucking level when he made this record. This thing is so deep and touching and grand in its ambitions in terms of uh, not only vocal performances and richness in its instrumentation, but the statements it's trying to get across in its music, whether that be trying to get in touch with a higher power, as well as trying to get to the center of uh, various problems that uh, ail society, uh, well, at least during the time that this 
record was re recorded. Not saying things are uh, uh, necessarily um, great right now. But yes, absolute powerhouse of a record emotionally and instrumentally. And for me, a quintessential example of an artist trying to uh, make some kind of lasting impact on the well-being of the world through their art. Next, 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 we have the 1975 album uh, from Led Zeppelin, Physical Graffiti. I know I was talking earlier about a Bitches Brew being one of the best double albums of the 1970s. Well, that's also the case for Physical Freaking Graffiti. This record is <laughs> incredible, amazing. Uh, the performances and the riffs throughout these tracks are great. Robert Plant is just uh, in his bag, vocally speaking. Uh, the songwriting is amazing. Uh, some of the best and most essential Led Zeppelin songs of all time. Their biggest singles are on this record, but uh, simultaneously, even the deep cuts go as hard as the prime tracks. And the record is, uh, you know, uh, again, quite, quite, quite freaking long. It's amazing the band goes on as long as they do with as much fire as they have locked and loaded on this thing. I would also make the argument that the years of effort and work Led Zeppelin put into uh, turning blues rock into, you know, their own thing uh, really paid off in this record. And certainly during this time period, there were quite a few uh, English rock bands that were, you know, doing their own interpretations, their own spins on blues rock. But personally, this physical graffiti, uh, I feel like is the alpha, is the omega when it comes to uh, uh, that lane. And we are going to move on to our last one in this video. That would be Television with Marquee Moon, New York rock outfit, uh, pretty legendary when it comes to the world of proto-punk and punk music. Uh, but you know, to me, television you could label with a lot of things and not really kind of get down to the nitty gritty of uh, what exactly the band is all about. People do often note their connections uh, and their influence on the punk scene, but simultaneously Obviously, there are numerous amazing, beautiful, and stunning guitar passages on this thing that are very obviously inspired by the likes of Pink Floyd and some, you know, pretty big name and slightly progressive rock bands who were popular at the time. Because while television did bring uh, some very peppy and catchy tracks on this LP, there's some really jammy and expansive songs as well with some gorgeous and wonderful guitar playing. Some of the best guitar playing of the 1970s, but don't assume this album is just like, you know, a full LP of, uh, you know, a virtuoso wankery or anything like that. It's certainly not that. For example, if you're a garage rock revival or a Strokes fan, you're going to pick up right away on uh, uh, the various ideas that uh, would go on to influence records in that wave. As much time as I've spent in the 1970s, as far as like, you know, digging through its most essential and most popular music, television's marquee moon still stands out to me to this day as just being one of the most unique sounding and uniquely composed uh, rock albums out there. It's simultaneously so catchy, so accessible, but yet also easy to get lost in its more uh, kind of trippy out there and expansive passages. Is it as popular as some other records I could have listed in this video as a 10 out of 10? Uh, no, I mean, it's very well regarded, but is it one of the most popular? I wouldn't say that, but uh, it is one of the best assembled uh, rock records and just period records uh, of that decade, in my opinion, which is why I would uh, include it in this video. That's why I would go ahead and do a silly thing like that. That's going to be it for the albums that I feel like are a 10 out of 10 uh, out of the 70s, at least the, you know, the handful that I want to mention now for this video. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think of them. What's your opinion on any of these albums? Love them, hate them, why? And uh, what records would you say are a 10 out of 10 from this decade? And um, mwah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. Anthony Fantano, 1970s, 10 out of 10, uh, forever.